Hi, my name is Anika Ahmed and I'm the psychology teacher here at JCC College. The event I want to speak to you about today is Eid. There's two Eids that Muslims celebrate within a year. The first Eid is after the holy month of Ramadan and the second Eid that I want to speak to you about today is about, um, takes place during the pilgrimage of Hajj um, in Mecca in Saudi Arabia that Muslims complete. Um, my favourite part of Eid, I'd say, would be being able to sort of dress up, have time and spend time with family and friends. It's a very enjoyable, very family orientated event. The types of food we tend to eat in my family more specifically are things like samosas, pakoras, pilau rice and we tend to have a massive meal um, with family members. And it's just a great, it's a great feeling, it's a great event, it feels nice to be part of something so special and I do really enjoy celebrating Eid. Hello, my name's David Blower. I'm Assistant Principal at Joseph Chamberlain College. Um, I've been asked to uh, talk about Christmas. Christmas is the Christian celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, the uh, founder of Christianity. And it's a time really when Christians are asked to celebrate that birth and perhaps all of us tend to think particularly of a key message of Christianity of peace and trying to build a world where we all uh, respect each other and show each other love. Um, how do I celebrate? I celebrate perhaps in a traditional manner, uh, sharing gifts with members of the family, coming together to share a special meal, uh, attending various Christmas events like um, maybe a theatre show or a, a carol concert. And I suppose my favourite part is, is being at home, uh, being able to relax from work and in particular spend time with family. Hello, my name's Ella Highland and I teach sociology at Joseph Chamberlain. My mother is Scottish and so every year we celebrate Burns Night on January the 25th. Burns Night is a celebration of Robert Burns, who is a famous Scottish poet. And uh, on this night, we sort of, it's a celebration with a lot of traditions that seem a bit odd, but are quite fun when you get involved in it. What we do first of all is we pipe in the guests. So traditionally, this is done with bagpipes as guests arrive. Uh, we don't have any bagpipes, so usually we improvise with a recorder or a violin or whatever we've got around. Uh, once all the guests are seated, we have a welcoming speech from the host and then after that we say grace, which is just a short prayer. Uh, Burns Night is actually a secular celebration, but it's just part of the tradition. After that, we uh, <coughs> eat dinner. So for the dinner, we have haggis, neeps and tatties. Haggis is a boiled pudding made from um, essentially the organs of a sheep, which actually is a lot tastier than it sounds. And we have those with neeps and tassies, which are uh, turnips and potatoes, which have been mashed up. Before we eat, we uh, pipe in the haggis again, and someone does an address to the haggis. So it's uh, an ode to the haggis, and then we uh, toast it with some Scottish whiskey. After dinner, we have uh, some speeches. So we have the immortal memory speech, which is about Burns's uh, life. And we read some of his poetry. And after that, the men do an address to the lassies, which is a speech thanking the women for uh, their help with cooking and for preparing the dinner and hosting. Uh, nowadays, it's more of a sort of funny uh, part of the evening where men say some sometimes insulting things to women, but all in good humour. After that, we have my favourite part of the Burns celebrations, which is the reply to the laddies. So the women get to make their speech back to the men uh, in reply to the sort of jokes that they've made. Finally, we finish the evening by singing Old Lang Syne, which is a song which is traditionally sung at New on New Year's Eve or Hogmanay as it's known in Scotland, but we do it on Burns evening as well. My name's Jazz Lau and I'm the careers coordinator here and I'm going to talk about Diwali. Diwali is the festival of lights. Um, India and in England we celebrate it as a big festival in November. Um, we celebrate it, um, I celebrate it because I'm a Sikh and I celebrate it because 
the um, sixth guru um, came out of prison um, with 40 prisoners and once he came out of prison we um, lit the whole golden temple with um, Diwali divas. Um, Hindu celebrated because Ram and Sita came out of exile. So it's a very big celebration and it shows um, good uh, triumphing over evil um, in the world. And it's um, about celebrating, having food um, and enjoying with your family. Um, the, the way I celebrate Diwali is I go to the temple, um, I will light up candles in the temple and um, offer my prayers and also go home and celebrate with family with food. Uh, we would dress up in new clothes and we would have a firework display as well. Um, that's my favourite part is the firework display and actually the moral of the story of good triumphing over evil. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sinead. I am a Government and Politics and RE teacher at JCC. So I'm going to tell you about Easter. Um, so Easter is a Christian celebration um, and it's really the key celebration for Christians because um, Easter remembers when Jesus Christ died and then rose from the dead and conquered death. And obviously Christians believe that Jesus is a man but also God and this event really showed how Jesus was God because he conquered the thing that humans um, suffer which is death. Um, so how do I celebrate it? Well I'm actually, I was brought up a Catholic but now I am an atheist um, so I don't believe in God um, however I do still celebrate Easter um, so the way that I celebrate Easter is it's a family time, so my family get together um, over the Easter weekend. But also for me, it's kind of a time of reflection. Um, and there's a few things that I reflect on and they're brought out in the Easter stories. Uh, so my favorite part of Easter um, is the family time. So time being together um, with my sisters, my brother, my parents. Um, and having time to just, just hang out. Um, and another favourite part is if I do go to church, even though I don't believe in God anymore, um, I do like the kind of quiet time where I can think about those things that I talked about earlier, love and sacrifice and forgiveness. My name is Patrick Harvey. I'm a teacher of English at Joseph Chamberlain College. I'm talking about the celebration, celebration of St Patrick's Day, which is on March 17th each year. St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland who was caught as a slave and taken to Ireland. He then escaped after six years of being a lonely goat herd and got a message from God to become a priest and a bishop and then went back to Ireland and helped turn the continent, the country, into uh, Catholicism. Now St. Patrick's Day on the 17th is celebrated by uh, lots of different people all around the world. It's um, one of the biggest celebrations in Birmingham takes place just the, set, the Sunday before St Patrick's Day where we have a parade through the Irish Quarter of Birmingham through Digbeth. It's the third largest in the world after Dublin and New York and it's open to everybody, not just the Irish, so you've got Welsh dragons, Chinese dancers, Tambler, drummers, all sorts in there. Um, my favourite part of the celebration itself is the actual parade. I'm part of the Donegal Association, so we've got our own banner, and each year we take part in the parade and we march through the, uh, the crowds up through Digbeth and back down again. And last year there were 70,000 people shouting and screaming at us. Hi, good morning. My name is Yusuf Kamir and I work within the inclusive learning team here at Joseph Chamberlain College. Today I'm going to talk about the uh, festival of Ramadan. Uh, basically it's one of the most important uh, event in the uh, Islamic calendar. It is a month whereby um, the, uh, it is believed that the Quran was sent to the Prophet Muhammad and also uh, Muslims have to abstain or fast from uh, sunrise to sunset, abstain from water, from food, 
and uh, a focus on a more kind of caring and sharing and more of a spiritual uh, stuff about uh, their faith. Um, we celebrated, uh, it lasts for about around 29 to 30 days and um, it's usually a very family uh, uh, centered uh, festival where uh, family and friends uh, coming uh, to um, you know bring and cook food together and as soon as the sun sets um, you know uh, everyone is, is, is breaking the fast and praying and it's it's um, again a month of, 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 of charity and of, of giving um, what you've got to to the poorest and, uh, and to the needy uh, my uh, favourite part of it is obviously um, those last 10 minutes before the um, breaking the fast really um, and um, it's, it's very, uh, they're hard because you count in the minutes but also uh, they could be very, um, very fun and um, very enjoyable if, if you're sharing it with friends and family or neighbours or uh, you know just, just, just in general. Uh, and, and also, uh, those 10 minutes makes you realise how perhaps it's tough uh, for, 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 for poorer people out there who, who actually uh, don't have enough food and, and don't have enough water. So um, it, it's a mixed feeling really. Uh, but overall, it's, it's a fun month. Um, hard at times, but fun, enjoyable and, and very spiritual. And that, that's Ramadan in a, in a nutshell really. Summer solstice is also known as Midsummer and is commemorated on the 21st of June each year. Um, this is the date that in the Northern Hemisphere um, we're closest to the sun and so it's often remembered as being one of the longest days of the year. Um, originally this was a pagan festival and people used to light bonfires and they would light these bonfires to ward off evil spirits. It was often associated with witches and it was often um, done to ward off dragons as well. If you travel down to Cornwall today, you can still see during summer solstice, some of the bonfires will be lit and people can go and see the bonfires. Um, aside from this, it's also associated with Stonehenge. Um, Stonehenge was built around 4,000 years ago. There's many theories on why it was built. Um, some people say it was to do with worshipping and it was to do with the sun. What happens then yearly is many people will travel down to Stonehenge and they'll go there for the summer solstice. What happens now is that there will be a festival, so there'll be music, there'll be different types of food, um, there'll be celebrations, and on the morning of the 21st of June, people will gather there at Stonehenge and they will watch the sun rise. Um, this remembers the ancestry of the people that originally built this and the celebrations that they had of the sun every year. Um, for Christians, this is also a Christian festival and it's called the Feast of St. John. It remembers the martyrdom of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus. Um, the reason it's celebrated on the 21st of June as well is that scholars have predicted that St. John was born approximately six months before Jesus was born. And so for many Christians, this will be a day of fasting also. Hi, my name's Abby and I'm the performing arts teacher at Joseph Chamberlain College. My favourite celebration of the year is Pancake Day, also known as Shrove Tuesday, which is the last day before you then go into Lent, leading up to Easter. So it's the last day of the year where you get all your food together out of the cupboards and make pancakes before you then decide on giving something up leading into Easter. My favourite pancake is golden syrup and sugar.